Today in the Audio Hotline studio, we have the Heil PR40. This is a dynamic microphone meant for broadcast and studio applications, but it tends to be most popular with podcast and radio world. Although I have heard that there are quite a few people that like to use it on kick drums and bass guitar. Before we get into all of this, I just need to say one thing. Let's get mic'd. One quick thing I do want to say before we get started is a big thank you to B&H for sending me this mic to try out. They have been insanely helpful recently. Just amazing people over there. Even though I was sent this microphone by B&H, they did not ask me to review it in a certain way. My opinion is my own, and it will always stay that way on the audio hotline. But once again, big thank you to B&H, and if you haven't checked out B&H, you should definitely do it. I would highly recommend it. They have some awesome stuff, audio gear, video gear, photography gear, computers, just so many goodies. A big reason I've wanted to try the PR40 is due to the fact that this microphone has some serious lovers. But then there are also some people that just absolutely hate this microphone. I just bit my lip. I spit my damn lip! When stuff like this happens, when people are split on a microphone, it usually means that somewhere in the frequency response, there's a pretty serious boost, whether it's in the lows, mids, or highs. Knowing me, I have absolutely checked out the frequency response of this microphone. <laughs> Come on. Audio nerd here. Come on. So I definitely had some expectations of how it would sound and who would like it, but I definitely still wanted to test it out and gain my own opinion on this microphone. With that being said, let's just go ahead and jump in. Today I am using my Zoom H6 to record this with the gain set at about 50 5%. I will occasionally use a windscreen during this review, and this is actually a Rode windscreen that you can use with the Broadcaster, which is right behind me, or the Podcaster, Procaster, stuff like that. Heil does have their own windscreen that's made specifically for this microphone, if you do want to check that one out. I'll link this one and the Heil one in the description. Later on in this review, I will try out like an inline preamp, a mic activator, whatever you want to call it. I'll probably use the SE Dynamite or the Cloud Lifter. Or both, just to see how that sounds and how big of a difference it makes. But right now on B&H, you can purchase this microphone for $329. With this $329 microphone package, you will get a black leather carrying bag, which has molded foam on the inside to keep your microphone safe. You will get a microphone mount that has a couple nice features that we'll check out. Inside the mic mount, there is in fact a stand adapter. This will come with a pretty awesome sticker, as well as some documentation. Last, but of course not least, it will come with the microphone itself, the quite pretty Heil PR40. There are a couple different package options with this microphone. There is one that actually includes like a professional really nice shock mount as well as a desktop boom arm. That one runs about $399. But in the package that I received, everything feels really solid. I absolutely love this type of mic mount. I love that it has the tightening feature where it holds the bottom of the mic and you can just kind of tighten it to where you feel comfortable. It just makes me feel like the microphone is more secure in there. I am absolutely obsessed with this carrying case. I think it's fantastic. The microphone itself has an incredible build, and honestly, I think that this microphone is just beautiful. I feel like it just has a really classy look. But that's the nice thing about these high lpr 40s is they actually have a lot of different options when it comes to colors and finishes. There's this black and gold one that's really awesome, a full gold version, a chrome version, and then of course the version that you see right now, which is the champagne version. And that's one thing I will definitely say about this microphone is it does look like a condenser microphone. I could totally see why someone would think that. But this is in fact an end address microphone and not a side address microphone like some of the microphones that might look like this. So definitely don't talk into the side of the microphone like this or you will be greatly disappointed and confused. <laughs> oh my gosh. This smells exactly like a brand new pair of Nikes. Like, oh my God, I love it. It smells amazing. <laughs> kind of smells like the inside of Dick's Sporting Goods. Well, now that we've gone through some of the basics of the PR40, let's go ahead and nerd out and talk about the Specky Spec Specs. The Heil PR40 is a dynamic XLR microphone with a cardioid polar pattern. This features a frequency response of 28 hertz to 18 kilohertz. It has a rear rejection at 180 degrees off axis of negative 40 decibels with an impedance of 600 ohms and a max SPL of 148 decibels. 
When looking at the frequency response, you can tell that there's a little bit of boost around 100 hertz. The mids are kind of up and down. The high end is very boosted. When I was looking at the specs and looking at that frequency response graph, it became pretty apparent why some people aren't a big fan of this microphone and why some are. There is definitely a big boost in that high end and... It is definitely not a flat microphone. You know, I kind of hate the sentiment that a mic sucks unless it's flat. No, that's not true. A mic doesn't suck if it isn't flat. It just means it's sculpted a certain way for a certain purpose. Higher end mics like this can still be great for certain people's voices as well as certain instruments. I don't want to sound like I'm against flat microphones. <laughs> that's not the case at all. I prefer flat microphones. They are much more versatile and you can sculpt them the way you need. I'm just saying that because a microphone has a boost in the high end doesn't mean it sucks. The company was just essentially trying to get a certain sound to help people not need to do as much post-processing. But it doesn't mean everyone has to like it, and it's honestly just up to each person's opinion and what they need. Anyway, little mini rant over. Let's go ahead and test this microphone out. Let's start out by doing a proximity test. If you want to get all close to this Nike shoe smelling microphone, here's how it's going to sound. If you want to get as close as this big ass windscreen will let you get, Here's how it's gonna sound. This might get a little loud. We're gonna do a plosive test. Peter Piper picked a patch of pickled peanutses. 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 Now we're gonna do a quick polar pattern test with some white noise. <laughs> Now if you're talking to the front of this microphone, here's how it's going to sound. Now if you're convinced this is a condenser microphone, so you're talking to the side of the microphone, here's how it's going to sound. Now if you're talking to the back of the microphone, here's how it's going to sound. Here is how this microphone would sound about three feet away from my mouth. Here is a background noise rejection test with a super clicky keyboard. And here is how the Heil PR40 rejects the super clicky keyboard. And here is how it rejects just a regular keyboard, like the Apple Magic Keyboard. This one. Now, if you plan on getting this microphone for a podcast or anything where you're going to use some post-processing on it, here is just a quick test with some EQ, some compression, a de -esser, and possibly a noise remover. All right, now I just want to do a couple additional tests with a mic activator, inline preamp, whatever you want to call it. So here is the microphone at about 55% gain with no mic activator. And here is the microphone with a mic activator plugged in. This is the SE Dynamite. And now I am currently at 28% gain on the Zoom H6. And here is the Cloudlifter set at about 28% on the Zoom H6. 55% gain with no mic activator. Once again, here is the SE Dynamite at 28% gain. And once again, here is the sound of the cloud lifter. The mic activators definitely do help this microphone out. I wouldn't say it's nearly as hungry as the SM7B or even the RE20. But putting in one of these mic activators can just make the noise floor level just so significantly lower on dynamic microphones. I love it. I'm going to leave the SE Dynamite plugged in for the review section of this. This is a hundred dollars, I believe. I'll leave a link down below to all of the products that I used in this review. But now that we've gone through the basics, the specs, and we tested this microphone out, let me go ahead and give you my review of the Hale PR40. As I was saying before, I can understand why some people love this microphone and why some people don't like it. But for the people that hate on this microphone, they're saying that it's just like a piece of junk, it sounds like shit, and honestly, in no way do I feel like this microphone is unusable. Yes, I do think that a little post-processing and EQ would help in a majority of situations, but that's how I feel about most microphones. It's rare that I plug in a microphone and I'm just like, hell yeah, that sounds perfect. Some microphones are absolutely close, don't get me wrong, but there's usually a couple adjustments I'll make. But I do think that a lot of beginners that don't know how to EQ very well may benefit from a higher end microphone like this that kind of picks the sound for them. But honestly, I don't feel like the sound is 
a super big issue on this microphone. I feel like it would take me just as much time EQing this microphone as a flat microphone. But like I said, I do think that some people that just are a little nervous to EQ, but they still want, a, you know, a presence boost and they still kind of want that podcasty sound. I feel like this kind of delivers. Other than sound, I do think that the accessories that come with this are very high quality products. They're very nicely made. I will say that if you do like this microphone, it may be worth actually picking up the $399 package for an extra $70 to get that professional shock mount and the desktop boom arm. But essentially the conclusion that I've came to with this microphone is that it's not for everyone. I definitely don't hate this microphone. I think it could be used in a lot of great ways, and I believe it can produce a great sound. I think it actually sounds good. But I do feel like picking a microphone does often come down to either finding a flat microphone that you can process, or finding a microphone that has a tone that you like and fits your voice. Obviously, this isn't a flat microphone. It's more of a preference-based microphone. If you like the sound, get it. However, I do feel like this microphone would be very solid on a kick drum and a bass guitar. I didn't really like it on the guitar, the acoustic guitar. I felt like it was a little too bright and a little too harsh. So overall, I do like this microphone. I love the accessories that come with it. I do think it is really well built. And I do personally like the sound of it, although I will disclaim it is not perfect. But I do think it has a really cool sound and it could make a lot of podcasters very happy and a lot of people recording instruments. With that all being said, the grade that I give the HAL PR40 is a B. Thank you for watching this review of the Heil PR40. Man, I really struggle saying that. Hi Heil. Hey, Heil. Hail. Hi. Heil. Thanks for watching this review of the PR40. There we go. I hope that it helped you out, helped you decide whether you want to get this microphone or not. But most of all, I hope you had fun. Stay tuned for a lot more videos and a lot of other reviews. There are a lot more coming up. And thank you all for watching the audio hotline. I'll see you audio nerds next time.